Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with episode number 24 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're unleashing the power of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. I will need you to pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the SunFounder Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now, most of you guys probably already have your kit, but if you don't, look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon and you can hop over there and pick up your kit. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we're working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what we're going to do is really the follow-on to the project that we were working on in lesson number 23. And what that project was, was we had a DHT11 temperature humidity sensor connected to the Pico W with an LCD display and then then a toggle switch where we could toggle between displaying temperature Fahrenheit and temperature centigrade. And so we will hop on over there and we will take a look at where we ended up last week. This was where we ended up last week. You've got the Raspberry Pi Pico W, the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. You've got the toggle switch. And then down here, you are displaying the temperature and you're displaying the humidity. Now, if I come in and press and release the button, giddy up, we toggle to degree C. If we come in, press the button and release, we toggle back to degrees Fahrenheit. Now, what we can see in this work that we've done, we're getting input from the user through the push button. We're displaying the output to the user through the LCD display. And what is the only thing that is holding us back the only thing that is holding us back is this USB cable that is providing power to the Pico W and the different components. And so this is the thing that is keeping us tethered to the desktop. All right, what we're going to talk about today is how to get rid of this cable and how to power the device remotely, how to power it with a rechargeable LiPo battery. And the cool thing is, is that you can recharge that battery with the Pico W. And so this is going to be a really cool setup. Now we're demonstrating it for the purpose of this project, but really it's the same thing that you would do for any portable project. We're just demonstrating it with this one. Okay. Does that sound neat? I hope it does. Now you guys that might just be drive by shooters and haven't taken the first 23 left and you're ju just jumping in into the middle of this, uh, uh, jumping into the middle of this in lesson 24, you need to kind of get caught up. So I'll give you just a few hints as how you can get caught up very quickly. You would need to go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com and you would need to get this LCD 1602 display library and you could use the happy little search, uh, the happy little search icon right here you could search on LCD Display Library for MicroPython. Make sure you get the one for MicroPython. You could come down, copy the library, and then save it to your Raspberry Pi Pico W with the file name lcd1602.py. And this kind of tells you how to install the library. Once you install the library, then you need to come over to www www.toptextboy.com and you need to search for this lesson, which is measure temperature and humidity on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. I got a, uh, a video that shows you how to do it. I've got the schematic on how to hook this up. And then I've got the code here. And this code is the code that we are starting with today. Okay. So you do those couple of things and you'll be caught up with where the rest of us are. But now for the rest of us, we're going to go and we're going to start 
start with that code that we left off uh, with last week. And if you remember, if you didn't save it, hopefully you guys saved it. But if you didn't save it like the other guys, you can come here to this lesson, uh, temperature and humidity on the Raspberry Pi Pico W, and you can snag the code here that we are starting with. Okay, now we have this code, and just to make sure it runs, we are going to come and we'll be watching here, and we're gonna run this. And then when we run it, it sort of boots up showing temperature in degree C and making sure that our toggle switch works. Yes, the toggle switch works. Okay, that's very good. Now, the first thing, if we're going to go mobile, is the first thing is you have to be able to run the program without being connected and without coming up here in Thonny and clicking the little run button. You need an automatic way for it to run. And that's actually very simple. Whatever program that you save with the program name, the program name main m a i m a i n dot pi. You save the program as main dot pi, and then any time power comes to the Raspberry Pi Pico W, it will boot up and run that program even if you are not connected to a computer. So the first thing we need to do is we need to come up and we need to do a file. Okay, a file. And then I'm gonna do a save as, and I'm gonna save it to the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Up, oh, I gotta kill the program before I can do that file. And then I'm going to save as Raspberry Pi Pico W. I'm going to save it as main.py, like that, main.py. Say OK. Yes, overwrite what was there. OK, now let's try running it. OK. And now as I run it, it shows uh, on the screen, it shows that it's working. And then down here, it looks like it's running. And then if I do that, it is toggling. So that all looks good. Now what we need to see is let's come in and let's just kill Thonny. Okay. Uh, do we? No, I don't need to save it. So we're going to kill Thonny. And then what we are going to do is we are going to come to a bigger view here so you can see things more clearly. And now we are going to remove power. Okay, so now we're just gonna come in. The only thing this cable is doing now, the only thing this cable is doing is providing power. And so let's see if I can plug that in. A Little bit, uh, there it is, okay. And boom, you see it booted up, it's running the program, and then let's see if it's gonna toggle. Okay, it's toggling. And so we are almost there. We've got input from the user, we've got output to the user, and we automatically boot into the program that we want. And now what do we have to do? We just have to get rid of this cable. And so we're gonna go ahead and do that. We are gonna get rid of that cable. And now we are gonna come in and we need a way to power it. Well, the good news is, and one of the things that I love most about our most about our Raspberry Pi Kepler kit is it has everything that you need in order to now power this thing remotely. Now you need to dig through, you need to dig through your kit, and there's some things you need to find. There's three things you need to find. You need to find, and I'm trying to kind of take it apart so I can put it together for you again. You need to find this battery. Okay, this is a rechargeable LiPo battery, 3.7 volts, I believe. And this battery in my kit is purple. It might be different in your kit, but it's kind of hard to miss. It's a big battery. And then you've got this battery holder with a, uh, with a little cord on it. What you need to do is you need to put the battery in the battery holder, being mindful of the uh, being mindful of the polarity. You can see this little knob goes up and the flat part goes to the spring. And now we've got that ready to go. Now there is one other most incredible, most valuable little component in your kit. And for mine, it was in this kind of little bag of goodies, right? This little bag of goodies. And what it is, is it's this little component here. You can see that it's got three leads on it and it has, it has a slot that allows you to plug the battery into it. Now, where does this go? Where does this go? This goes to 
the first, second, and third pence right here. And that, that would be, if you look here like this, that would be, be pin 40, 39, and 38. 40, 39, and 38. And so in this orientation, it's those end pins, and we're just going to come in, and we're going to plug it in. Okay. Now, what I should say is on this LCD, what we've been using on this LCD, this is the power this is the power wire from the LCD. We've been using that on pin number 40, that bottom one, and that provides five volts. And so that lights this thing up with five volts. So if I just come in and plug this in, then what that does is that, that provides the power for the, for the LCD. Now this is the one little thing about powering from the battery. It's the thing about powering from the battery instead of powering from the USB cable. You are no longer going to have five volts available at that pin 40. But if you come to the pin 39, if you come to the pin 39, you will have 3.7 volts there. So what we need to do is we need to take this power pin and then instead of uh, connecting it to pin 40, the corner pin, we're going to connect it to the second one over. So now we're going to be powering this with 3.7 volts. Now when that happens, we're probably going to have to adjust the contrast back here to get it to show, but it should run on 3.7 volts. And so now is our moment of truth. Make sure that you get this going the right way, and we're going to come in and we are going to plug this in. And what's good, it's showing, looks like it's showing signs of life. We're not seeing anything on the screen, so I'm gonna come in and see if I can adjust that to where we can begin to see. Let's see if I can put it. I think it's maybe coming. Let's see. I'm always afraid I don't want to turn this too far. Okay, there it's coming. And I kind of take it almost to the end of the travel, but you got to be really careful not to over drive that little, not to twist that little potentiometer too far, because if you do, you're going to ruin that I2C interface, and then you're going to lose the whole, the whole thing. So be very careful adjusting, but boom, look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, do you realize what a momentous point that we have just reached? Let me back this off again. It's kind of like, remember the kid on the bicycle, look mom, no hands, look mom, no feet, okay? So what we are is we are operating completely mobile. Now let's look, let's press the button and release. And it looks like it did not work that time. Okay, so it looks like maybe, maybe I need to, let's see if I can reset it here. So the display is there, but the toggle switch isn't working. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to just unplug the power and then I'm going to plug it back in and then it's booted back up and now I'm going to see. Okay, there it is. So it just in fooling around with it, uh, I must have killed the program, but I come in, press the button, toggle, come in, press the button, toggle, and look at that. We are completely mobile now in our project. So what does that mean? That means I can pick this up and I can go and I can walk around and wherever I walk around, I have everything I need. I have power, I have input, and I have, a, I have an output display. And so that is just a really, really huge, big deal. Now, the only thing, like I said, is we no longer have 
five volts available to us. The five volts comes from the USB cable, and this is a 3.7 volt battery. So we no longer, we no longer have five volts on that pin 40, but on pin 39, and let me make sure I'm saying that right. Yeah, on the pin 39, we do have the 3.7 volts. And then over here on the pin, uh, over here on the pin 36, which is probably this one right here, that one still has the 3.3 volt output. And so we got really everything we need. Now, you know that at some point, this is going to need to be recharged. So you're going to have to go take it out and put it in a recharger. No, all you do is come in and then plug the USB cable back in. And now as we are plugging the USB cable back in, what happens, this little red light comes on, which says that the USB cable is both powering the project and recharging the battery, okay, at the same time. Now you see it got a little boost there, and so when I put that in, I could go in and maybe adjust the contrast a little better where it would show. But you see, with this, you can power it and you can recharge it without having to have anything else. And so let's take this off. And it looks like it's staying alive. Let's see if it stayed alive. Sometimes I wonder if you change. Yeah, it stayed alive. Sometimes as you're plugging and unplugging, you might need to restart the program. But that is pretty, that is just absolutely pretty, uh, pretty amazing to me. So the direction that we are going to be going in this class as we're moving forward is doing projects like this and having the ability, doing projects like this and having the ability to walk around remotely to make prototypes and projects that you could maybe 3D print a case for and could have something that you could walk around with that would do some useful function, like report to you temperature and uh, temperature and humidity. Okay, guys, this is another thing that we're going to be doing. You see that this display, there's a couple of things. It's kind of unwieldy. Okay, it's a little unwieldy. And also it doesn't really conveniently like plug into the board. And so it's a little bit not what your absolutely uh, prime display would be for a portable project. And so I'm going to ask you guys if you can, there's another display that I would like you guys to go ahead and order. And it's under 10 bucks. I think it's like six or seven dollars and it's well worth it. And what I would really recommend, probably a lot of you guys already have this, but what I would really recommend is, is that I would order a couple of them, two or three of them, because they'll work on the Arduino, they'll work on the Raspberry Pi, and they are just such a super, super cool little device. And that is an OLED display that I show here. And I actually had a little trouble. We were talking in the premiere last night. I had a little trouble getting this up and running. But you can see that I have it up and running now. And this is just absolutely amazing. There's a couple of things I really like about it. I like it that it is a lot more manageable than having this thing just flopping over here. It fits very nice onto a breadboard. I like that. Also, you're not lighting that backlight. So this uses a lot less power. And so your battery life is going to be a lot better. And then the other thing that I like about it is it's just smaller and allows a really compact little project. And you can see even here, I am running it completely, uh, completely uh, uh, mobile. It's not, it's not connected to anything. And this isn't real. Th I just did this as a print. It's not really measuring temperature and humidity, but it just kind of shows you uh, shows you what you can do here. So you guys look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon. Pick up one of these or pick up two or three of them because they're low cost and they are incredibly useful little devices. And so I think as we're moving forward, we'll probably be using this instead of the big LCD. Now, if you don't have the coin to get that, you can follow along on all the lessons using what you already have. But if you've got a few bucks, go ahead and get this. All right, guys, man, I hope you are having as much fun with this project as I am. It's kind of like it's all the sudden things are happening, right? You remember we were going through, okay, this is how you do a for loop. This is how you do an if statement. This is 
how you open a pen and this is how, you know, all the fundamentals. And then once we got through that, it's like, wow, now I got a project that I can get and and move around with. So now things are going to be happening at a much faster pace and doing more, uh, more exciting things in these video lessons. And so I hope you guys uh, hope you guys are enjoying that. And so you don't really have a homework uh, assignment this week, but what you can do is you can go ahead and order. You can go ahead and order your little OLED display and then uh, and then we'll have that to make the make the builds a little neater and a little bit more compact a little bit more energy efficient in the future guys I hope you are enjoying taking these lessons as much as I am making them if you enjoyed the video give us a thumbs up it always helps us with the old YouTube juice if you will leave a comment down below if you've not already make sure you subscribe to the channel when you do be sure to ring that bell so you'll get notification when future lessons drop and as always share this video with other people because the world needs more people doing coding and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos paul mccorder with toptechboy.com i will talk to you guys later